Hi again everyone. This video is on Wilfred Owen's Disabled and what I'm going to do is talk you through the main language features that stand out to me for this poem and the ones that you'll probably want to write about for in your English language coursework analytical essay. Um, I'll also finish by going over some key words and some key themes that you will want to use to frame your paragraphs around to put in your topic sentences. So here we go. The first word for me, the first technique, is symbolism. Owen's character here is anonymous. As I've already highlighted, we don't have a name. He is just referred to throughout the poem as he. Just like Eva Smith in Inspector Calls, this person isn't given a specific name, so they become a symbol for all those people who have been affected and have been injured and can no longer lead an ordinary life, how their youth has been taken away from them. And that happened to millions of young, young men. And Owen saw a lot of that himself on the front line as a soldier. We also have some quite interesting verbs used in this poem as well. For example, we have shivered, reminding us of how weak, vulnerable, cold he is now in his ghastly suit of grey. I'll come back to that. He's now waiting. He is now a very passive person, whereas before he was very active. It says later on how he used to play football, for example. We have other verbs such as spurted to demonstrate the violence of the blood spurting from his thigh. Just, and Owen includes a very graphic image. He's very famous for those. He's very realistic about war. He doesn't hide the horror of what happened in it. Also, um, we have another verb here, before he threw away his knees. That verb there suggests that he was the one to blame. He was the one who was careless for doing that. And Owen, that's where he's potentially criticising those who sent this person to war as being very careless. For example, they're the ones to blame, but it's this boy who's had to live with that for the rest of his life. Another technique we have is the use of senses. Owen uses lots of sensory description in this poem. We see that in the first uh, stanza, obviously he's shivering, we get to understand how cold and vulnerable he is. We also hear voices, Owen makes use of sound here. And we have the contrast to him sitting there and waiting in comparison to the voices of those boys. We, Owen wants us to hear the voices of joy and celebration of the voice of the people in the park in comparison to him sitting there silently, for example. We also have senses when he will never feel, again, the sense of touch, how s slim girls' waists are. And we have another sense of touch here with how warm their subtle hands are. That warmth, that intimacy is something that he will never have again now due to, due to the state that he is in. So Owen uses senses to portray how his life used to be like, which makes the contrast to his new life even more stark, even more obvious to us as readers. It makes us realise just how much he's lost by using those very different sensory descriptions. We also have a bit of alliteration in the poem. We have that again in the first stanza. We have the voices of boys rang saddening like a hymn, voices of play and pleasures after day. We Those sounds are what we call plosive sounds, the kinds of sounds that you have to push out through the lips, play and pleasures. That adds to the sense of noise that's happening in the park um, through that use of alliteration there. That noise is obviously in contrast to what his life is now like, waiting for dark. It's very, it's in the midst of silence. And just to go back to that point about waiting for dark, dark here is a metaphor. It's a metaphor for death. This very young man has lost his youth and is injured. He has no prospects in life anymore. He has no hope of intimacy with anyone else. He's no career prospects ahead of him. His life, his chances have been taken away through war. And now he's just waiting for dark, the end of the day. But metaphorically, he's waiting for death. He's waiting for the end of his life. 
We also have personification in the poem. S uh, Till gathering sleep had mothered them from him. Sleep here is personified and sleep mothers him from the voices of that are happening in the park. So that metaphor, so that personification there of mothering is really important. Sleep is something that protects him from those voices. It stops him hearing those voices of play and fun in the park because they're too painful for him to listen to. That's what a mother is there to do, to protect. And sleep is protecting him from those voices. He prefers sleep because he probably means he forgets what kinds of state he's in. That's obviously not considering the probably the nightmares that he would that he would have from his experience. So throughout the poem, Owen uses juxtaposition. He juxtaposes what his life used to be like to what it is now. We've already mentioned the, the voices in the park in comparison to him. We also have the juxtaposition of colours. We have the light blue trees, um, when town used to swing so gay, when glow lamps budded in light blue trees. So we have this sense of light. We have the light blue here. Um, we also, and that's juxtaposed against the grey. That is, that's um, that's the suit he's wearing. That's how gloomy, that's how dull his life is now. Before it used to be full of joy, full of light. Now it's full of this, this darkness, and it's full, and it's very grey and lifeless. And that juxtaposition of colours creates a stark contrast and makes us realise just how much his life has changed. We have lots of discourse markers, well, some at least in this poem. A discourse marker usually is a, some kind of connective. It guides the reader around. The discourse marker that stands out to me is the word now. And there's probably one more I've missed. There we go. So you can see there I've highlighted the word now three times. That discourse marker now shows me how Owen is constantly switching back between the past and the present, once again to juxtapose them against each other, to make me realise just how different the present day is from his youth, to make us realise just what an awful impact going to war has had on him. Let's have a look at this bit here. He talks about his decision for joining. He thought he'd better join. He wonders why. That dash there creates a pause. We have a moment of emptiness. He wonders why. There's a big gap there because I think he doesn't remember why. That pause there, I think, maybe signals regret. I think that pause there is him really wishing he hadn't signed up, for example. That pause is full of regret. It's full of sorrow. And he can't exactly put his finger on why exactly he, he made this unfortunate decision to join up to the army and of course he wasn't old enough they smiling wrote his lie they knew the army officers knew he was underage but they wrote him down as 19 years old because they needed more people to go to war what we have as well is this short sentence that immediately follows that he wonders why that short sentence again just heightens the sense of regret and pity he feels for that decision he knows why he did it. Someone said he'd look a god. Some It would please his girlfriend at the time. But he wonders why. That is, so despite all those reasons, he regrets doing them. We also have, in this poem, modal verbs. Now he will spend a few sick years in institutes. So he's still very young, but obviously he's lost his youth, as it mentions in the poem. Now his life is almost predetermined. There's almost like this script has been written for him. Now he will spend a few years. That modal verb will suggests there's a sense of certainty. There's only one path that his life will end in, and it's him spending a few sick years in hospitals and being very passive. There's no chance of anything else happening to him other than living this very kind of individual, isolated uh, life. 
We also end with rhetorical questions. So that's a structure point, the fact that Owen ends with rhetorical questions. We see that obviously here with, why don't they come and put him into bed? Why don't they come? The rhetorical questions is almost like the speaker is pleading with God, perhaps. Why don't they come? Why don't they come? The speaker is almost desperate, wishing this person's life would, would end and he would be put out of this misery. How he's going to have to live this life of isolation and the speaker and the speaker and the boy. There's this sense of they're desperate for their life to end. They are waiting for dark. They are waiting for death. Their life holds nothing else for them. Their life has been ruined by war. So therefore they want it to end. Um, so why don't they come? They could be referred to as deaf and the sensory description links back into shivered. The poem starts and ends with the sense of coldness. His life lacks any warmth, any happiness whatsoever. Okay, so those are my top techniques for this poem that you'll probably want to write about. There are plenty more. Um, you can look at your original annotations from our lesson on this, but you could also look at plenty of the websites online, Disabled to Very Famous Poems, so type in Disabled Wilfred Owen, and there's plenty of other websites that will help you find out even more techniques for the poem. But this is an essay, you don't need to cover absolutely everything, just make sure that the ones you use, the techniques you use, you're analysing them in lots of detail. Here are a list of key words that I would want to see in topic sentences about this poem, and then you can use these techniques to prove uh, these points. So, Owen is a writer who is very critical about war. That's something you might want to say for your introduction or your conclusion. So, through the, the presentation of this figure, Owen is being very critical about war and what war has done to a generation of youthful people. This poem is an anti-war poem. So, again, that one would be a good one for an introduction or conclusion. This poem is obviously about... A disabled person. This poem therefore portrays disability in certain ways. It portrays disability as a very as something very limiting on life. Um, we also have a sense of bravery coming through from some soldiers. The fact he, um, for example, in this stanza here, uh, poured it down shell holes, blood spurted from his thigh. We see how he was put through enormous stress and had to undergo very violent actions against him. We have a sense of sacrifice. These young boys are being sacrificed for the country, knowingly. We have a sense of wasted youth, how this boy was barely an adult and already his life has been wasted. We have a sense of horror at the violent descriptions. We have the violence, as I've mentioned earlier, of some of those descriptions. The fact he's been left legless reminds us how violent war is. We have a sense that, this, sense that this person is tormented. They are waiting for death. They are waiting for dark. Overall, we feel a sense of pity. Owen makes us feel a sense of pity through his descriptions. There is a great sense of loss in this poem. He's lost the sense of... Of the, he's lost the chance of being happy with, another, with, a, with a woman like the girl's waists he used to feel. There's a sense of melancholy in this poem and there's a real sense of despair at the end of how he's wishing death to arrive. So there's my summary of Disabled. There are just a reminder of some of the techniques that I would talk about and here are some key words for your topic sentences. And this is very similar to our Inspector Cool's essay. You mention an idea and then you quote and then you analyse the quotation talking about what the symbolism does, what the verb does, what's the point of that metaphor, for example, in as much detail 